Okay, so like most of us, we all want to get to Diamond every season. The top 1%, the Wall Street of League. God, it's so hard. It feels like no matter how hard you work at it, it's always out of reach. Okay, this sounds insane, but I honestly believe all of you watching this video can actually get there. The beauty of League is its diversity. If you don't have godly mechanics, just choose a brain dead top lane champ like me and focus on your game knowledge. Influence the game in other ways. League isn't like other games like Smash Bros or Fortnite where if you have bad mechanics, you can't get there. There's always an opportunity to get better and that's the beauty of the game. You got it this season, I believe in you guys. So for today's video, we're going to be going over advice for low elo players. Maybe you're stuck and nothing is working on your climb, but don't worry, we got you guys in this video. Okay, and so for our question of the day, what is something that you're struggling with in League of Legends right now? For me, I have a really hard time not communicating in chat. I know it's really bad for the game, but when I get frustrated, I just wanna type it out, and I know it just, honestly, it makes it much harder for me to win. And that's my thing. What's your thing? I wanna know down below. And if you guys wanna get better at League of Legends this season, obviously go to ProGuides.com, using the description link below. Find yourself your challenger coach right now, and get better at the game. No excuses this season. You're getting to your dream division. All right, let's get into the video. Okay, so first up, the best advice for every low elo player is to take your time with everything you practice. You've probably gone through so many different videos and so many different concepts. There's a lot to take in. And in spite of this, maybe you haven't been improving or climbing. Take things one step at a time. A lot of players expect to just wake up Diamond or in the LCS within a month. Every individual person learns or improves at a different rate. For me, I'm kind of a slow, methodical learner, so I take one piece of advice at a time and will practice that one thing over the course of a couple days. And that's really helped me out. Regardless of how quickly you learn though, I know that a lot of low elo players don't take enough time with what they're working on. You might have heard from another video that if you farm well, you're going to climb out of the rank you're stuck in. Your friend might have told you to watch your replays and learn from every game. Your favorite streamer might have said to one trick a champion. All of these things are true. You can apply any of these strategies and you should see yourself improving. But the issue is that a lot of players try something, don't see results, and then just give up. It's like this. Let's say you want to run faster, so you watch a video on how to run faster. They explain ways to improve over time. You try them out and recognize you're still running at the same speed. Then you just give up because it's not working. Well, that's not how it works. You can apply these strategies, but they're not band-aid fixes. They're always going to help you improve over time. Be patient and persevere. The importance is just building a habit so that when you do practice these things, it becomes second nature. We're gonna talk about a couple of different pieces of advice for all the low elo players out there, but remember this one first and foremost, take your time, be thorough with each skill you practice. It's a marathon, not a race. And this goes for everything in life. Now in terms of gameplay application, ask yourself the question while you're playing, are you where you should be? First of all, where should you be to begin with? Sometimes random fights come out of nowhere. I know that in the ranks of iron, fights can happen for no reason at all. Players in silver though, there might be some reasons why these fights are happening, like both junglers are trying to go for dragon. While you're going to have to understand macro play concepts to improve, remember that you're not playing in high elo. Even though high elo players might explain why a certain play is correct, it might not always be the case in lower elos. For example, if you're in a low elo game where at least 90% of the time people A ram it down mid and then the team fight breaks out, you know that this is the norm. A higher elo player might tell you not to fall into the A ram trap and just stick to farming side lanes. This is the best play for them because it's definitely not what happens in their elo, but it might not be the case for your elo. So let's throw it back to the ARAM situation for lower elo players. Let's break it down with an example. Let's say you know a team fight is about to break out in mid. Now you have to ask yourself, where should you be? Should you go with your team or should you go to a side lane? If you're fed and confident that you can carry those fights, then why not just group up and go for them? I can't imagine being a 5-0 Trindamir and then losing an early team fight since all I'd have to do is dive in, right click their marksman, and then voila. On the other hand, maybe you're not that fed, and the enemy Jinx is 4-0 instead. Will grouping up, even though a team fight will break out, benefit you? All I can imagine happening here is that the Jinx would end up going 9-0 instead of 8-0 by the end of that fight. Consider the context of your own rank to determine what's going to happen. 
Be real with yourself. If you know that you're in a really low elo where stupid stuff happens all the time, don't get shocked when, well, that stuff happens. Learn to expect it and then determine what your course of action should be. A lot of the times it's hard to determine what that decision may be. If you go to ProGuides.com and find your challenger coach, they're very good at helping you decide what the best course of action is. If you're obsessed with learning macro play from a favorite streamer, content creator, YouTube channel like ours, or a coach, or even a friend, that's great. Keep learning because this stuff is going to help you improve and climb. However, don't forget to stay in the moment and understand that while it can help you, tunnel visioning on making high elo plays could do harm. It's like you're trying to answer simple arithmetic with quantum physics. Don't overcomplicate things. You don't need to make a 300 IQ brain play when all you really need to do was kill the five players on the enemy team. If you determine that the simple option is going to be better, then go for it. If it ends up failing, ask yourself what went wrong and then just learn from it for next time. It's as simple as that. Okay, so remember how we mentioned that video that told you how to farm better? Well, guess what? This is one of them now. No matter how many people out there preach that farming will help players improve, the message never seems to really stick in. There's a lot of specifics about farming that are worth going over. First of all, you need to learn to farm, period. If you miss a lot of minions randomly, that's detrimental to your gameplay. You need gold to get item advantages and get stronger than your opponents. Pop into a practice tool, play against a bot, or maybe even play 1v1s with a friend in customs. Get used to farming, especially while under pressure from an opponent. At the very least, even if you don't understand anything else about farming, you should at least aim to get 100% of the minions you attempt to farm when not under pressure. No one gets every single minion every single time, but you should strive to improve on this and get as close as you can to this goal as possible. It can't hurt you to practice farming and landing those last hits to rack up some more gold. It seems kind of boring to do so, but just go on a practice tool, throw on some Netflix or maybe your favorite song, maybe some YouTube, maybe some of our YouTube videos, and then just practice last hitting. After all, gold is one of the most important resources in the game. So now that begs the question, should you value farming over trading? Well, the answer is not necessarily. This is going to depend on your matchup and the state of your wave. If anything though, especially in lower elo, why can't you get both? If you have AOE abilities, why not go for those trades while simultaneously farming? Why not farm minions that are low first and then trade immediately after? Or why not trade when you're not at risk of losing minions, then backing off and killing minions? The short answer is that it's not really that black and white. You can aim for both, but the general rule of thumb is that if it'll net you some advantage in the long run, it's okay to give up some farm to trade with your opponent. For example, if you know that chunking your opponent will let you push in the wave, have it bounce back to you, and then allow you to create a freeze for an even bigger lead of your opponent, then yes, that trade is definitely worth the minion or two that you missed. Think about what your champion is capable of, how they scale, and how your opponent scales as well. From there, you need to determine what your priorities are. So 10 minions a minute is a good goal that you can set for yourself, but depending on who you play and the circumstances of the game, this honestly is not always very realistic. If you're getting camped or literally getting ganked every time you walk back to lane because the enemy jungler won't even go to finish their jungle camps, then it's not feasible for you to acquire 10 minions a minute. That's a good benchmark if you're under no pressure and are in a good matchup as well. However, don't tunnel vision on it because the goal isn't always achievable. Finally, how can you carry games without kills? Remember that about 15 minions is equal to a kill. You've probably heard this over and over, but if you're able to build farm leads over your opponent, you've essentially gained kill leads over them as well. Sometimes you might dominate your lane and your opponent is going to play extremely passively, giving you a bunch of farm. You can't change the fact that your opponent won't let you kill them. At that point, all you can do is build farm advantages, zone your opponent, or go for turret plating. When you're confident, you could also call for some dives as well. However, always accept your circumstances and don't force anything. If all you can go for is a farm lead, then that's completely fine. Aim for a 30 CS lead on your opponent by the 10 or 11 minute mark and you've successfully solo killed them twice. Finally, you need to know that often winning your lane alone isn't enough. This is once again where macro strategy comes into play. If you do find yourself solo killing your opponent over and over again, then at some point they aren't worth that much. You'd get a lot more gold from killing someone new anyway, but you also have to know that the enemy team could be doing something else while you're getting fed. 
So for example, if you're winning bottom lane super hard, but your top laner is getting destroyed, the game is eventually going to come down to a who can carry harder scenario. With that lead, you could either push for an early bottom turret or even row mid lane to get them ahead as well. Two fed lanes is a whole lot better than one, so you don't lose anything by helping your buddies out. If you manage to take your turret bottom early, for example, you could also roam and gank top, stop the bleeding before it becomes an even bigger issue, and then just watch the enemy top laner type top difference in chat once their nexus explodes. The salt is real and you can honestly break down people's in-game mentality with some roams. Everyone hates dying and everyone hates it even more when they get ganked by another lane. Take advantage of this, spread the lead to your teammates, and also win the mental game against your opponents. Winning lane is great, but a lot of times, low elo players don't make the most out of it. They keep it to themselves when they could use their leads to dominate the rest of the map as well. At the end of the day, League of Legends is a team game and working to get your entire team ahead makes games much more rewarding than just playing for yourself. Some players might disagree with this because they're used to 1v9 in games and that's the only way they've ever won. Especially if you've been playing for a long time, this might seem correct to you and sometimes it actually does work. However, the game has evolved a lot since the past. The power levels of every role, while definitely are completely equal, are much closer to each other than they were in the past. No one role can easily carry games by themselves. It's often easier to play as a team since all roles have agency over their games. To recap, remember this though, you always want to take your time with everything you practice. Be patient and really, I mean seriously, try to get good at what you're trying to learn. Build good habits. Make sure to understand the concepts of macro play, but apply your best judgment to your own elo. Don't try to play challenger level games when you're stuck in iron. Learn to farm, it doesn't hurt to get more practice in, and don't tunnel vision on arbitrary numbers that have been set. Finally, when you do pull ahead, aim to get your entire team ahead, not just yourself. That's it for the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Again, my name is Kristoff, and if you guys want to get better at League of Legends this season, click the description link below, go to proguides.com and find your challenger coach. That's it for the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Good luck in your next few games, and I'll see you on the Rift.